call the board of a selectman meeting of uh, June 5th to order. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, for one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's note that the uh, be aware that the meeting is being recorded for use on internet and on local uh, cable stations. Okay. Uh, wants and boards to break up. Uh, follow up of the, uh, from the town meeting. So, Mr. S Mr. Chairman, I put this on the agenda only because the meeting has to be posted 48 hours in advance. I had no knowledge as to what would happen Monday night. And I thought that it would just be appropriate if we had this on the agenda in case there was any discussions I had to have. Um, one that has come to my attention is in reference to the acceptance of Pearl Road. I know that that's why uh, John is here. He and I've, I have had multiple emails back and forth over the last two days. His concern is, is that process may not have been appropriately followed. Um, I'm not a planner. I don't have appropriate planning experience. I have forwarded off his initial concern to town council Town Council has, and John, I think, um, have a little bit of a disagreement right now as to which Mass General laws there are. However, I will say that with my limited experience on acceptance of roads, is that usually we do receive a letter officially from the Planning Board that will say that they're requesting that this road be accepted. It will provide the meets and bounds of the road. Uh, I just checked with the town clerk. She does not have that letter. I don't believe I've ever seen it. I see a lot of mail. Maybe I missed it, but I don't recall it. So unfortunately, town council is away tomorrow and Friday. So I'll be following up with Matt next week, and we'll see as to what the process is. If it was followed and John disagrees, then John will take whatever recourse he believes. If town council believes that a process uh, malfunction did occur, then I'll, I'll have to advise us as to what we need to do going forward. But again, we'd have to revert back to the planning board because the planning board has to advise us that they actually officially want to accept the road. Comment from the floor, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, in order to accept the road, there, there are three things that have to happen. Um, one of them is the layout of the road. And that begins with a petition. And I believe that happened from the town members of Pearl Road petitioned to have it done. The second thing under, under layout that needs to happen is that there needs to be a vote taken by this board to uh, accept that road. And that, that layout plan has certain requirements that need to be met before that vote can even be taken. There's a, a seven day notice that needs to happen. There's, there's uh, other written notices that need to occur if you intend to take it by uh, eminent domain. And, and that's under MGL 8222. Um, the, the thing is, I don't think that vote ever happened. And once that vote takes place, it is required to be filed with the town clerk seven days prior to the town meeting. If it's not, the vote at town meeting never should have taken place. So I asked the board at this time, was any vote taken in regards to the layout of Pearl Road as a public way? I have no knowledge of to that at all. I, I didn't take any vote. In fact, all that that came before me there was all kind of just thrown at us. Uh, and this is why I didn't have all the facts in front of me. In fact, that that uh, agreement that was made with our uh, town councilor there, I didn't see it until about five minutes before uh, the meeting there. And uh, it, it just seemed to be rammed down my throat as the chairman of this board. It's a whole system there. And we didn't go through, through protocol, the whole, the, the whole thing. So what you're saying is probably right. I mean, that thing should have gone before the Board of Health, the Conservation, and that, that agreement. I've never seen anything come in like that before, okay? And I'm, I'm not going to go and, and, and get involved in signing anything if I don't have all the facts. And I, and I figured that that night I didn't have all the facts. I'm not basically against the people up there, and I know the, the voters' intention, they're paying, they're paying good taxes on the houses, and they, and they feel that, that they should have it. And maybe that's a good way to look at it. But I don't really know now uh, what we can do. Uh, but uh, now the thing I understand is going to have to be uh, uh, actually uh, recorded, right? Uh, sure. Yeah. And, and, uh, and you know, so it, it just seems to be that 
you know, put it on track or something like that. The, vote, the voters put the intention that they want it, and it's up to us that we have to do things to make it right. I think we should do it. Well, here's, if I may, Chair, comment. Yeah, you go ahead. Um, if, if I may, the, the statutory requirements are pretty strict. Yeah. By failing to meet any of the statutory requirements, and this, this goes right to the vote that was not taken, was not recorded, with the town clerk mm -hmm. prior to uh, the vote at town meeting, you've already failed one of the statutory requirements, and there's no way to correct it. I mean, there's there's specific case law on that. There is no way to correct it. The only way to do it is to start again. So that would be a new petition, the vote, sending it to the town clerk. Part of that uh, layout uh, vote is you do refer it over to the planning board. I mean, that, that's one of the statutory requirements. And the planning board reports back to you. Now, the report is not binding. But, that's <coughs> the I mean, the second part is, is the acceptance, and that, that takes place at town meeting. And there was an initial uh, discussion about whether it required a two thirds or, or a, a mm. simple majority. And the answer to that is because it was recognized on a subdivision plan, which I, I didn't know at the time of the meeting, um, it only requires a, a majority vote. Um, so, I mean, Technically, that took place, that happened. But it couldn't happen valid because you didn't meet the first statutory requirement of, of the layout vote. So that vote at town meeting is invalid. The second problem that I see is the acquisition aspect. Um, under, two, under MGL 8224, uh, it sets forth 120 days for the select board to acquire the land. That's a deadline for acquisition of the land. Eminent domain by purchase. And, and here's the question, and, and maybe the town administrator knows the answer to this one. Uh, how did the town intend to take acquisition of the land? We received, now I believe the answer to your question is we received a quick claim deed. It was actually, I received it. Um, Eldon, what you received five minutes before, I think I received it at 6.30 p.m. And it was a quick claim deed in consideration of a dollar. That ex okay. Here's the problem there. Let me just finish for okay. a second. Let me just finish that one thing, yep. thought, John, because I think it answers your question. It goes to the fact that we were still waiting to hear everyone's opinion on on whether or not to accept this road. We, I don't believe we were ready to take a vote. And then we received this document, you know, minutes before town meeting starts. <coughs> our, our, we were already on record saying we were not in favor of accepting that road. We received this document, you know, like I said, minutes, half an hour before town meeting starts. And my reaction was the same as it was prior to. No, I, I can't get something of this nature a half an hour before the meeting and be expected to read it, understand it, make sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. And I maintained, I was in agreement with Eldon that no, we should not accept the road. Could we later on down the line consider it with more information and time to think about it? If, yes, but okay. not at that point. I'm sorry, go if, ahead. If I may, what I just heard you say is there was an offer to accept the road uh, or the land which contains the road in, in fee simple for a dollar. Yes, that's okay. what I recall reading. And that's payment of a dollar from the town. No, payment to the town. Correct, David, on that quick claim deed? I'd have to reread it. I don't recall. Yeah. I do recall it was one dollar was the conveyance fee. Okay, well. Oh, I'm sorry, Maeve, you, you're yeah, probably yeah. right. So the town would to pay. To them as grant. Even, yeah. even if it's a nominal consideration of a dollar. That requires a two-third vote at town meeting for that expenditure. Acquisition of land and payment requires a two-third vote. That vote didn't happen either. There should have been actually two articles, or one article that contained both. Um, so, so the actual acquisition is now invalid as well because you failed to take proper action to give yourself the authority. And that authority is clearly contained under MGL 40, section 14. Um, 8224, which the town council is relying on, only sets forth the deadlines of acquiring the land. You have 120 days. If you don't do it in 120 days, then the road doesn't come public. So I guess what I would advise the board is this. Um, you'll recall that prior to town meeting, um, 
town council met with us advised us that there was 120 days as what was set forth before the board had to take any action after a vote from the um, from town meeting uh, and so we have some time you'll know that I've been uncomfortable with this process. I mean, I've been officially and behind the scenes saying that all along. I was unofficial. I was uncomfortable that night. I received the document at 4:37, uh, and and had no I no ability to be able to vet it, vet the process, see where we stood, ask any questions, until we all sat together with town council that evening. So, with that said, I don't think anyone is arguing. I will remind the board that the only official vote. That this town has, that this board has ever taken, was to actually not to accept the board, the road. You've never taken a vote to accept it because you actually took a vote not to accept it. So, <laughs> right. no, right. that's, that's all the I mean, that's are. why it, at town meeting, you know, we call you. It was three zero against. We made that very clear, right, and it was right. inviting. Um, so, with that said, um, I don't think there's when nobody's arguing. John may be entirely one hundred percent accurate. Uh, I am going to obviously follow back to town council. He will advise us as to where we stand. And then if this board, I mean, based on what John is telling, me, telling us, is that if you decide up front that you do not want to accept the road, then apparently it won't even go to town meeting. I mean, because it sounds like what you're saying is that they have to take that acceptance first. Yeah, uh, And, you know, that's not the way I understood it, that when the planning board requested Mr. Howard to come here and petition, he was asking us just to simply place a warrant on a town meeting. So that's what we did. You know, I received no other advice besides that. If, so, if I'm, oh, sorry. so all I'm saying is at this point, and we could talk about this all night, but I don't think anyone's debating or arguing it. No. Um, I think at this point, especially since the board was always on record as not wanting to accept it anyway, um, is that we, we go to town council. We have town council advises. If there was a procedural defect, then he advises us as such. And then the board will then reconsider as to what its next move is. I would assume at that point that Mr. Howard and or those residents may want to repetition the board. And then we'll just deal with it at that point. I mean, I think that's the best advice I can provide. If, if I may just go on record stating, it is, it is abundantly clear in the statute mm -hmm. that the procedure to be followed was not followed here. Right. I mean, there are, are multiple statutory failings. If town council advises you differently, he's wrong. He's flat out wrong. And he's putting the town at jeopardy as well. The, the other question I have is in regards to the septic that runs underneath. Um, that was, my understanding, was passed to the homeowners association as part of that property, that road line property. So if you acquired the entire piece of property, you acquired that sewer septic system as well. So you, you're going to want to take a look at that. I don't have enough facts or details to fully analyze that. I don't know what the quick claim deed stated. I don't know what any other agreements are. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's issues left, right, and center here, as well as statutory failings, which could put the town at significant risk later on for litigation. Yeah, but as the association, even you know, taking a responsibility. Do they, do they have the expertise to, to do it? I mean, I, I mean, there's no engineer or anything else there. You know, there's a lot of things wrong with this. I think like the best thing is just what David says is to go back to the town council and and have them look at it and then get back to us. And then, well, the caution I put is the town council has already indicated that he thinks that, you know, in, in the answers I received, that the process was followed. So right. it's not. Tell them no quick. On that piece of property, and I just need a quick piece of history on that. When I talked about the development of that property in Marioni, they talked about the senior center. They want to put cluster houses out there. That guy said to a lot of people in the past, ripped off the lady in the past. That's why I used the language towards that man. What they wanted to do, when he wanted to build it, run a pipe all the way up to the beginning of that street where it is now, take a left onto Walnut Street, follow all the way up to Manly Street, wall the 24, Go there and take a left. There used to be a canteen truck guy that did so, and had that was going to be the laser field. Then they changed it, go up the, all the ways up again to Manly Street, take a right, and that was going to be the laser field. And those arguments were always brought up. What happens if this don't work? How are you going to get it over 24? What happens if somebody breaks the pipe? It's all saw pipe. Now backing up, then this guy come here and do this development. What kind of agreements in that thing? I have no idea. I just, whatever. But. I know we did it before. We had a 
private ways. It was an article at the town meeting. And people, we voted in favor of taking it over so people could have the uh, streets plowed. We just did it at uh, the industrial park a couple of me years ago that they just plow a path up. That's private property too. We plow a path up there. We don't own it just in case there has to be emergency vehicles going up there. Mm -hmm. I'm not defending the process if they just Well, we're going, to look, we're going to look at the whole thing and see, yeah. see what we have here, okay? That's the history of that property yeah. up there. The yeah. developer that wanted to build it, we were lucky what we got up there. If it's a small token, I think they just want the road plowed. We're not having it in the road, for what I heard. But if there's more to what you have to do, then you have to follow the scene. But if I may make <clears throat> one further suggestion, and this may be uh, outside of the scope, uh, that if and when a final agreement uh, does come under consideration, that you don't acquire that piece of property in fee simple. You don't acquire it. You simply maintain and record an easement. And in, and in that regard, if you draft it precisely, you don't take over the sewer, the septic, and, and I mean, you've got the slope and drainage and all this other stuff that you've got to look at, but just an easement across the road that can't be revoked. So just a thought, and I'm done. What about the one across from my house? Will that fall into the same deal? Well, I don't want to get into all these things. I think, I think we got to deal with this issue here, and uh, I know there's all, all kinds of dim and uh, and uh, you know and we'll come back and, and, and see. That's it. I, 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 John, I mean, I I think your input is very helpful. I think it comes from the love of the law, and you know it's okay to challenge decisions because it helps us it helps us to think it through I don't know if town council will agree or not but you know you've certainly opened our eyes up to something we need to look at and David is in contact with town council and we're waiting for another answer correct yeah so he, okay. he's advised me that he's gonna be out the next two days okay. again I think in fairness to town council everything was rushed at the very end it was. Uh, and I was not in consultation with him, the planning board was in consultation with him, attempting to um, put together this agreement. Board health, conservation. Uh, and as I advised the that. board, is that when I then saw this quick claim deed, and it refers to both <coughs> drainage, uh, who who's responsible for drainage and for septic system, I think that the board of health and the conservation commission must uh, weigh in and review it because as I said to all three of you individually once I saw it that night when you rush things you miss things I remember saying it to each one of you yeah. and, correct. and because we never had the ability to be able to properly vet it I was always concerned so again we'll give town council more time and let's see where he, where he lands I recall my exact words being my answer remains the same I can't read something like this and understand it in t 10 minutes and I also recall Conservation Commission weighing in at the town meeting and saying that had it been introduced as a public road when it was being built, they would have asked for things to have been done differently. I believe those were pretty close to his exact words. So it seemed to me at that point, conservation wasn't in 100% agreement. Right. Bottom line, the vote never should have been taken. Oh. Well, all right, let's go on, and, and we've got a direction to go on. Thank you for your input. All right, B, uh, board uh, meetings and uh, for the second half of the year here. And uh, as you know, those meetings are all uh, subject to change if there is uh, situations that come up. I'd like to take a, a motion uh, to approve these as read, and it could be a subject to change. I'd like to make a motion to accept these dates for review and then vote on them at our next meeting. That's fine. Is there a second to that? That's fine. Second. Okay. And the only other item since, oh, I'm sorry, did you take I call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and then since we're talking about upcoming this, um, Board of Select meetings, you, we had, there was an error that showed that it was posted for June 12th which is a week from now. But as you know, you always meet the first and third. Yeah, you yeah. just had the wrong date. So um, unless there is any uh, 
any negative feedback towards this. I want to stay on the right schedule or our normal schedule. And our next meeting would be in two weeks, as is as customary, which would be June 19th. No. Motion to, to June 19th. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So voted. Okay. Thank you. Say plan review, special permit, contract, yeah, assessors. Do you have any comments on that? Um, I'm trying to find hmm? where it is here. Uh -huh. David, are you familiar with this at all? A little bit. If you'll see on page 11, we have an email from the proposed developer. Basically, what they're trying to do, it's on Pleasant Street, which is zoned to commercial. There are a couple of residents up there, but for the most part, it's commercially uh, inhabited most of them are a lot of our contractors yards are up on Pleasant Street and so this gentleman who owns some land is looking to be able to store commercial grade type of materials such as mulch and stones uh, it will be required to go through the permitting process of the Zoning Board of Appeals they certainly have a lot of expertise on this since as I said we we have a lot of contractors yard up in that area there's no special considerations or concerns. It's not in the Water Resource District area. It's zoned properly for it. So it would be just a straight site plan review through the ZBA. Any questions on it? I have none. Okay, Mo moving along. Uh, application for a transit vendor's hawks and peddler's license for George Russo. Uh, I made an administration decision on this. The only thing is, like, I think the day that he wanted it, it rained, but uh, he was told, uh, you know, he has to come in properly for this thing, and, you know, I can't be making administrative decisions like that off the thing. So uh, I, I asked it, and my girls to make it clear to him that it has to be official, you know, he's going to do this. David, how many days is the policy on that to come in prior? Do you know? It, it, there's no yeah, days prior to, uh, okay. but uh, he they should he just should have refiled and he filed for you with with Mother's Day, Mother's Day it rained. He wanted to do Memorial Day. We didn't have a meeting in between, so um, Eldon made the decision. We're just asking you to ratify. But because this was a second time, as um, Chairman Marrero stated, we told him you know we we try to be friendly and helpful, <laughs> um, but you can't keep on skirting the rule. I mean it's your rule. Um, so, um, you know, we just said we, we can't do it again. If you're going to come in again, you have to get approval in advance. So we're just looking to ratify allowing him to do it on, on Memorial Day, which he did do. Okay. So I guess uh, moving along in the E, right? Um, I'll make a motion to I'm gonna make a motion to approve that. Vendor application. Yeah, so I do a second, second on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 With a stipulation, he has to go through the proper channels. <coughs> uh, approved the minutes of April 25th, 2019. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I support. Accept the meeting minutes of May 15th, uh, 2019 for review. Moved. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The uh, F F20 appointments. Okay. Right, um, we received these two weeks ago um, right. to review. I'll make a motion that we um, accept and appoint all of those um, on this list. I have a second to that. Any discussion? I was in favor? Aye. 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 So voted. Um, the only one thing to keep in mind, I think there was a letter here from the town clerk. On page 35, yeah. what she was saying is in that appointment, there are three people who last year never got sworn in or didn't take their ethics test. So what she was saying is, is that those three individuals that's on page 35, if you could just make those appointments subject to the fact that they have to adhere to being sworn in or take their ethics test or else they, are, they, are, they, cannot, um, they cannot be seated in that position. Has that a motion? I'll make a motion to um, 
Appoint Patrick Harrington, Adam Anderson, and Paula Bethany subject to um, being sworn in and taking the ethics test. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Okay. Okay. The next one: a resignation of Warren Turner from the Community Preservation. Uh, so you know Warren's been very active, but I guess uh, due to the fact of other situations involving his health. He's stepping down. Um, Make a motion to accept Warren's resignation and request that we send a letter of appreciation for his service. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So voted. Request of Carol Ashton, uh, the Community Preservation Committee, uh, to be appointed. Uh, now, generally, David, do we just make this appointment or we open it up to uh, to uh, other people in the, in the community who would yeah, want I, I think that based on past practice my recommendation is is that we are now informing the public that there is an open position on the CPA right. with your acceptance of Mr. Turner's resignation so we now know that there is at least one person obviously a very qualified person <clears throat> excuse me that would like to sit in that position and so we've asked her to come in at the next meeting I think we now provide a couple of weeks notice to the general public that if somebody else is willing to serve that they can put in an application as well as Ms. Ashton did and then at your next meeting then you can then if you have more than one applicant interview all of them and then make an appointment position at that point. All right with the board? That's fine with me. Okay. Okay. ADA appointment. Deborah Connolly and uh, Patricia Spry. Deborah you still want to be on that? Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion for those two appointments. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Avoid you, Debbie. Welcome. Approve the, the, the surge contracts. Maybe a little explanation, David, what the surge contract is. Yep. So. So Sursage is our procurement group of about 20 communities. We go out to bid every 12 months for multiple services. This here is for DPW supplies, and the next one is for water and sewer treatment chemicals. And so all of these here that are before you provide the lowest bid during the competitive bid process. So it just requires a vote of the Board of Selectmen to approve all of these uh, individual contractors, and then the contracts will come in and then you'll sign them at that point. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted. Okay. Uh, TPW supplies. Yeah, it's uh, that's, all, that's, that's all part of it? That is correct. Yeah. Okay, so that takes care of communication reports from boards and commissions. Okay. Uh, correspondence from the public. Determine a course of action. Any public comment? Anybody wants to make? Yeah. An, an, yeah. I'll go ahead, Neil. Golf course. Did, did I talk to Dave or whoever? Did we change hands on uh, the maintenance people over there? Is that still the same people that when we bought it, they're still doing the maintenance over there? Let's go off on Sunday, and this kid I teamed up with, he, uh, he works there. He says. The course looked awesome past weekend, honestly. And he goes, I know that whether I hear this crap in the thing, nothing to do about that. But he goes, Yeah, I work at the uh, golf course. They just hired a new company to take over and do the maintenance there. Yeah. Is there any truth to that? Or? I don't know. Um, the contract allows them as managers to make whatever hiring decisions they have to make. Um, so I could certainly inquire and I can get you an answer. But I, they're not required to inform me, and I did not ask the question. Do they come here and tell? Because I, that golf course was turning, if I'm in order, Elder, was turning into a cow pasture. I'm not the best pro. I don't expect to be a pro, or whatever. But people hacking it, build barrels to fill your stuff when you go to the rounds. There's no water buckets out there. There's no outhouses out there. And I was just curious. Are they going to just run it into the ground? But then when I talked to this kid, he said he wanted somebody new. We need money because that golf course would be a real money maker for the town. I know we spent four million dollars, a lot of money we spent on it. Everyone says we overpaid for it, but that's yes, they the past. But if 
I'd have the people come up here if you have the authority asking what they're doing with that golf course because that's our golf course. 20 years, what's it, a 30 year no? If it's a 30 year no, 20 year management contract. Uh, we put into the contract that at any time, if the Board of Selectmen would like to wish to have them come in, they're required to, they can't say no. Thank you, thank so, Yep, so we're more than, you, we're more than welcome to do that. I talked to Mr. Laramie probably about every 60 days or so. Um, they've always paid on time. I mean, I'm pretty simple on this, is that he pays, <laughs> I don't receive complaints, um, and as long as I get my money, I get my bond every single year, I get my copy of the insurance, and quite frankly, I'm really glad to hear what you said because my feedback so far about the course is that everybody has told me that the course is better than it's ever been. And so that's a positive as well. And I know with them, this, with the sign out front, they've done some more landscaping up front so it looks better from the street. Um, they seemingly are p putting money into it, but at any time, the Board of Selectmen can just request them to come in and they are required under contract to come in and be able to answer their questions. So I, I get a little distracted, Neil. Are you saying it's not being maintained or it well, is being past, maintained? I just seen it. Now I'm starting to see these things when I go to other golf courses there. Like they go to a hole, they might have a thing where you wash the balls. Right. Some places have a place where you have water, right. and you have to start to put your trash. I'm starting to see them around now. I didn't see them before. Okay. They were just whatever. And the course looked like a dump. Everybody hacking it, nobody watching it. Usually, if you're familiar with golf, you have a range, you go out there, watch the golfers, yeah. make sure they took the divots to keep the game going to get people out there. But it's our course, and all I'm saying is once in a while, in my opinion, to bring them up here, what do you actually do with the course? Like you say, you might get complaints, or they're not paying just uh, instructive criticism. But I'm just saying, that course could make this town a lot of money. Because when people go there, and they venture off into the restaurants and whatever it is. But in the past, I thought it was going downhill real bad. I mean, you got sand traps out there with all filled with water. I know there's a lot of water. And then you got some uh, drain pipes just leaking all over, and there's some holes on them. Uh, People drive the carts and they drive one in the wet when they're not supposed to. And I mean, they just got to take more better maintenance to it. But the past weekend I went out there, and it looked awesome. It really yeah, that's, did. that's great so, because that's the feedback I've received. Yeah, so it sounds like they've they've made improvements. They're doing a good job maintaining yeah, it that, in comparison to the past. But I just know if you so, switch hands with the new management company, you just told me they can hire whoever they want the maintenance the yeah, of course, that's all. So I know the kids said they changed hands. They just started a new company and they're taking over. Well, it sounds that's like that's story. within their legal right to make that decision. Well, I mean, it looked good the past two days anyways. Plus, I didn't lose that many balls, so I must be getting better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, want, I got one other comment. We're working on that uh, light at uh, Copen Street. And, uh, of course, they put it on the other tail end. I put it on the North Island Street, and there's a 400-watt uh, sodium up the other end. And now we're working on uh, North Main and Copen. And uh, it's pretty hard, uh, as it seems to be, that, uh, that there were 50 watt sodium that, that, that was there. And now they're up to, up to a 400-watt. Uh, uh, well, I thought that they were going to, you know, either put one on the point, which they say they couldn't, uh, that would take care of both streets, or now they they basically have both lights uh, are on the main street. Now, what I got what I got to figure out tonight, there, I got on the way home. Now, I don't know. If I'm probably going to have to come out and do this later on when it gets dark. But anyhow, uh, if there's enough light in the back part of uh, uh, Copeland Street. If not, uh, I, was, I was with the with Bob Moran from uh, He said, uh, if you think that should be on the Copeland Street uh, uh, side, he says, that can probably be arranged. I think that's the way, it, if they couldn't put it on the point, they have a light on each side, it would take care of both streets. Now I gotta see the back side of Copeland Street. Now, I just wanna see, but we're going from a 50 watt sodium to a 400 watt. But it's pointing out, the second one is pointing out into Main Street too, which I thought a better uh, solution was have that. And he says it can be done now, you know, put on Copeland Street. They, they've got it. And they beefed up the, the, the lights. What was happening up there, there's floodlights on the driving across the street, okay? And uh, one light uh, was putting the other out. 
So half the time you weren't getting any lights at all there because of the, the trippers there. So uh, eventually I think we're going to get what we want up there, but I'm working on it and I'll continue working on it. So I think that uh, he, he said, it doesn't matter what National Grid does, it's what the town of West Bridgewater wants. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm working on it. I, I have three things, Eldon. Is yeah. that okay? Three short things. So I just received an update today, I think it was today or last night, on East and East Central Street lighting. Um, Verizon first came back with a schedule of the end of this month, and um, we asked them to reconsider that, and they came back with they're going to try to get it done um, by early next week which will put us on schedule immediately following for IW Harding to come in and do the remilling and repaving of the asphalt and then paint the lines. So I think they said the week of June 17th, we should have that done and lights up and working, subject to weather. Yes? You said you they repave in the road. What made it tear up in the first place? Was that a finished road, what they did? I know they didn't do the stripes down there, though. Whatever. They, they did. But they did finish the asphalt. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean did to you interrupt. Say, did you say it tore up before? I read one of your posts. You said that uh, whatever it tore up, you're going to look at why. But the question is, why did it tear up in the first place? But that's a finished product. So I didn't get down to the granular level of what was in the asphalt and all of that. All I wanted to know is, okay, we know there's a problem. What are they going to do about it? Who's going to pay for it? And how do we make sure it doesn't happen again? And, and that's what the engineer was doing. So he was going back to them. And you know I have to be confident in our engineer that he understands that all of this at the level of what's in the asphalt, what happens when they remill it. Um, is there anything in it that, for lack of a better word, a contaminant that would cause the problem to reoccur. I left that in his hands. He and Chris were discussing that, and I believe they, I, I have faith in them that the process they're going through and having it done will work. Um, you know, it, could they re relay this pavement and ha it happen again? I guess so. It could happen anywhere. But again, I'm going back to trusting the professionals that the, the work they've done. But that doesn't prevent you, Neil, from calling and asking the question. Absolutely. I encourage residents to get involved as much as they feel comfortable and want to because you have a much better knowledge of this than I do. So please, and, and I'm not being sarcastic in any way, please call, call Chris, say, listen, I'm concerned about this. Can we talk about it? I didn't know about it until you said it. I'm ready. Yeah. A hack job, was it done right? Because I'm in the construction, but not yeah. that end of it. Okay. But I know somebody that's into the pavement industry just to see, did they mix it right? Are they using the right mix? Or did they just say they ran out and they just do a patch over? But we're glad we caught it when it at this stage, instead of down the road. Right. It was actually residents that started calling about it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure Chris, maybe DPW knew about it, but residents started speaking of it too. So, and then I just got involved in this, I think, out of the same frust frustration everyone else was feeling. And I don't want to say just got involved, got in involved a little more. Um, but it, it looks like it's moving along. And uh, the engineer has been very good about communicating. He really has. So if um, I may, I just want to be able to sure. answer Neil's co co comment. Um, the engineer recognized back in March that there was some um, defects in that pavement. And so we just had to wait till the warmer weather came. They do what they call a core sample. So they actually go in, they pull it up. Turns out it was bad mix in that one spot. So what we have to do is pull it up, remill it, put in new mix. So it can happen. And then when, once the, once the road is finally done, then we get a one year warranty at that point. And so that one year warranty doesn't start until it's all done. I have one question about that. Thank you. We, we, the, the contractor was trying to get another $60,000 off uh, because he compacted off to the sidewalk there. Where is that? Is that still in existence or did he forget about it or what's going on there? I have not heard back on that issue. There's been no further discussion. And you're getting back to the, to the blacktop and you see what's happened up there. I, you know, I'm up on Route 24, it seems to be the same thing. They can blame the blacktop and everything else. We, we ran into that up in uh, 
uh, Manly Street until we dug down and got all the bad soil out. Uh, you know, those trucks were, were beating up Manly Street. So, so a lot of those uh, situations, is un it's what not, what's underneath. They can blame the blacktop because they, they seem to be passing the same holes out there on Route 24 every, every year, okay? And I told them, I said, you ought to do less of that. I says, and get down and, and do where the real problems are and what's underneath the blacktop. So I hope we don't run that out there on that intersection. If, the, if they do, they're going to have to dig it out and, and put, you know, correct fill. I'm not saying the fill's bad there. I don't know. Yeah. But right now, they're blaming the blacktop. So it doesn't, I mean, it, I think what you're referring to on 24, it almost looks like it's heaving. This does not look like heaving. Right. This looks like someone ran over it and graded it almost it's after. Better. And it's, or it started to separate. So, yeah, to, yeah, I mean, sorry. again, I'm not experienced with it. It does look to me like. But a it's bad being mix. attended to, and so we, it, it, it'll still be, you know, under warranty there. To, there were some questions about a left hand turn there and whether the road was wide enough for a left hand turn, and the engineer gave specific um, dimensions. And I did post that, and I'll provide it to anyone who wants it um, that there is room for that. Um, but that's, that's an update on that. I, I did hear from the Dugan family, and they were very grateful and very impressed with the recognition they received at town meeting. So the family was very grateful for that. Is that the kid who uh, saved the people? Yes. That was yeah. awesome. So the well, that's a duty. Yeah. Thank um, you guys for recognizing that. Thank you. Um, that's it. Okay, anything else, Anthony? All good. Okay, uh, I'm moving on to the uh, administrator's report. Yep, so basically, um, there's only one order business and the rest are just really FYIs and thank yous. The first one is in reference to an online auto auction. We've had some equipment and some vehicles that we've been attempting to sell. For the most part, we've been successful. We have one vehicle that we have not been successful in being able to sell, which is our bucket truck. Uh, in recognition of that, Chairman, K I mean, um, Selectman Kennehan had approached me and said that this is the vendor that the state uses. Is that correct that you use it? Yes. And so we looked at it. We had a conversation with them. They sent us over their stand contract. I reviewed it. And there's, again, no cost to the town. But because it is a contract, if they require it, the Board of Selectmen would need to take a vote. So with that said, I just look at it as another tool. We could still use the other ones that we're using. We could still go out and do RFPs, IFBs, IFQs, whatever we want to do. But this just provides another tool that I think that we should at least make the attempt. So with that said, um, I can explain anything that I need to, but it's one page and it's pretty straightforward and there's no, um, there's no real commitment from the town. So with that said, I would ask that the, um, the Board of Selectmen take a vote to allow us to be able to in enter into agreement with Auctions International and for me to sign on behalf of the town. So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. All right. So um, after that, this is really just FYIs. You know, the next one uh, was Public Safety Day, and at the same time was the River Walk. I just want to say thank you to the uh, police department for anybody who went there, and I know all three of you did. Um, the police chief, the fire chief, they just showed really great leadership in, in what they put on. So a special thank you specifically to Sergeant uh, Russ Regan, who really is the one that does most of the work. There was free hot dogs. There must have been 150 uh, young children that was out there. They were enjoying themselves. The parents were enjoying themselves. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good weather is always helpful. Um, but again, it's our opportunity to be able to say thank you to the town for the fact that they provide the resources that we have so we can have that apparatus. And in return, we give the general public an opportunity to be able to look at, inspect, play with, enjoy the apparatus. They just did a nice job. And I want to give Russ, the chiefs, the entire department's credit for that. Um, and at the same time was the Riverwalk which was right up the street on River Street uh, in the Open Space Commission, put that on. Again, just an opportunity for us to be able to showcase some of our open space and for some people to be able to enjoy uh, the Town River. And again, good job to both John Delano and to our Open Space Commission. Uh, Dear graduation, I go to that every single year. It was put on last week on, on May 29th. It is literally one of my favorite days of the year. There were all sixth or seventh graders that are in the class. Uh, 
it is no longer just about drugs. It's all about alcohol. It's about vaping. It's about bullying. And Officer Thaxer just does another excellent job. The school department does an excellent job with it. And the reason I like it so much is not only do you see the smiles of all the boys and girls and their parents, but I firmly believe that a lot of this has really good long-term benefits to children that they realize the impacts of drugs and alcohol and, and all those other substances that hopefully are going to make them better adults going forward and, and have another have a better generation. So again, kudos to them. A police department, again, um, less than 100 communities in the entire state uh, have a police department that is accredited. We are on our way. We just received certification on, uh, yesterday through the state of Massachusetts. Uh, Selectman Kennehan came with me. Uh, it was a fantastic day. We're both the chief and the Lieutenant <coughs> Nixon were both honored. That is the plaque that they received. Uh, Lieutenant Nixon deserves a lot of credit. At this point, we have put together about 159 policies that are being implemented. And again, kudos to all the rank and file throughout <laughs> the entire department because they are acceptance of the policies. <laughs> These policies allow us to be able to codify exactly what our responses would be, how we would treat certain items, and therefore, if they're better trained, they should be better police officers. Uh, and the last one on here is in reference to our Maya insurance, which is our <coughs> workers' comp. Um, every year we attempt our best to be able to make sure that everybody goes to training and gets the proper um, training that they need. This year, thanks to Linda, one of the tasks that I gave her was to be able to document everything, provide it over to our insurance carrier. Uh, she had to basically, you know, she had to kind of like fill out a paper, it was about a 12-page document. But she did a really nice job with it, provided all the documentation, and we just received approvals from Maya where we're going to receive a 3% discount. So on a $100,000 policy, we'll save about $3,000. And it's saving $3,000 just doing what we're already doing and by chasing the money. So again, it's our, our ability to be able to do our best to try to save wherever we can. And I want to make sure that the board recognized that Linda did a really nice job with that. That's the end of my report. Thank you. Uh, there's only one thing I want to add on the Pine Memorial Sunday at 9 o'clock yes. at the uh, uh, cemetery, the Pine Hill Cemetery, that is correct. where they read all the deceased by and they go back at the uh, station for coffee. Sunday at 9 o'clock? Sunday at 9. Sunday at 9. Um, Eldon, could I mention two more things? Would you mind? Well, you're going to talk anyhow, so what the hell do I mind about? What do you mean I mind? <laughs> Glad you finally agreed to that. Um, what about Anthony? The, the <laughs> well, Anthony ain't talking about it. He, he can't get a word out. Otherwise, it, it's just a couple things. One, you were mentioning the events over the weekend. Um, one event that I attended was the Michael Jones um, Boy Scout ceremony. He went from a Boy Scout to an Eagle Scout, and this was quite a bit of dedication and commitment from this young man. And he had a whole list of achievements he had accomplished during this time. It was really a beautiful ceremony. They did a great job. Um, lots of, you know, good kids there. It was great to see the parents and be part of it. So I was grateful to be invited to it. Um, and the other question I want to ask is that we get more proactive in pushing out some of the information for town meeting, like the articles. I know residents can reach out to get them on a website or where you know where we post it but maybe we could get more proactive with that as soon as the articles are ready push them out onto the town's web page uh the facebook page we put them out there now. Um, on the town web page okay. not facebook if we could get it onto the facebook page i know it's not the official place for it to go but it's where everyone is and is looking and there was some negative criticism of the votes that were taken at town meeting by the, the voters there. Um, people commenting, you know, that had they known. I completely agree. The information is there for the taking, and there's plenty of meetings to attend. I know, John, you take a lot of time to attend meetings. Neil, you come to quite a bit, few of them as well. So the information is there if they watch the meetings or come to the meetings, but if we could start pushing out more of these documents, I think that would be good. The only criticism, the only criticism that I got was uh, 
and it's the same people that are asking the, the questions all the way down the road. So, so when you go through a, through the budget, okay, there and you say hold, and then there's a certain individual that, you know, <clears throat> is up to the mic and nobody else gets a chance, okay? I said, well, anybody can talk. I mean, just get up and, and say something. Well, that's, I thought that the moderator did an excellent job his first time uh, uh, doing it, but, you know, there is things like that that upset people and, and I would, wouldn't know anything about them unless they come up and tell me, okay? So uh, it, it seems that uh, there was one person that dominated pretty pretty well, but it was at the mic all the time, you know what I mean? And, uh, but the only thing is, that this person <coughs> evidently put the hold on those things, mm -hmm. wa wanted the, the questions answered. So I, I can't see anything wrong with our system, but some people just, you know, they, they have a right to talk if they want to. I think some people are more, uh, for lack of a better word, courageous to to get up in front of the audience yeah. and ask the question or make a statement. And, and maybe it's more confidence. I don't know what the, the way to describe it is, but anyone can get up and talk at town meeting and ask a question or I don't know the, the Roberts Rules version of it, but yeah. it's never been so formal that we say that's it we're done i mean there were times when someone called for the vote but there was plenty of time before then for anyone who wanted to come up and ask a question hey I, I, I know when i first started going to town meeting i thought it was pretty intimidating to go up and and ask a question but then i watched as others did it and said okay if i care that strongly about something then say it the worst thing they can do is vote no mm -hmm. Or oh, yeah, so yeah, right. Or not listen to me. That's okay too. But it's their right. It's their money. It's, our, it's all of our. It's our taxpayer money. Or to challenge the vote, which we did on one and actually turned it the other way. Right. So right. I mean, and, and the decisions that were made, while we as a board may have recommended or not recommended them, they weren't our decisions to make. We were just putting them out there for the voters to make the final decision. And if you use that PowerPoint, it's a selling point, not saying, I'm not talking about the town meeting, but going forward, if you can modify it every time, like this picture here, you had there, show everybody there, here, you dig there, whatever. I have my say, but I'm just saying, I believe in the PowerPoint. Right. You educate the member, uh, yeah, you educate the, the taxpayers. They see it, they, whether they buy it or not, but they got the final say. I was an elected official, I used to get my uh, butt kicked. You can say whatever you want to me, believe what I say, but just don't put your hands on me. That's all I say. <laughs> and I mean, we can be reached, you know, David can be reached, La uh, Lorna can be reached. There's phone numbers to call and ask questions. Um, department heads are available to answer questions. They're available by email. There, there are lots of ways to get information. And I don't think the three of us have all the answers. I know I don't. Sometimes I feel just like I'm a referral service. Someone will ask a question. I'll say, well, that's DPW. You need to ask Chris. But that's what they're here for, is to answer questions. Um, I was a little disappointed that some of the reaction has been, I didn't know that was going to happen, and why did they do that? Whatever. That's, it. that's all. And I'm not mad at you. Oh, good. I thought you that, were. That, that was a conversation last night at the phone call. I said, why would I be mad at you? I, I wish you spoke a little bit about that, about that land up there, that's all. About the pro road thing? Uh, yeah, about the pro road thing, I mean, because there was a three nothing. I mean, the, I mean, you know, I just felt like I was a loner out there, and, and you spoke about it, you know. Eldon, I had already, I had already casted a vote, I had already agreed yeah. that we should not recommend it. It was in writing. Yeah, I know. And quite frankly, the the some of the audience seemed pretty fired up out there. Well, they're pro rural residents. Okay. I, I you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm on stage. I can't hear yeah. everything that's being but, but said. That John, would, that, but that 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 vote was based based on we pay a, a lot of taxes. Those houses up there run around, around seven hundred thousand dollars, okay? And we deserve to have a town road. And that's how I, I, I read it. And, 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 and that's what, what was voted on, 
okay? How, how we got there, <laughs> that doesn't matter. It's to them. They, they went, that's, that, that's where it, where it ended up. But like I said, we'll follow it up. To, I heard yelling we, out there. I, I, it, it, I had already said my say, and I apologize if it didn't seem like I was supporting you, Eldon, but... No, it wasn't, it wasn't, he wasn't, wasn't supporting I mean, you know, we, we did, you know, we're a board, and, and if we vote against something there like that, and, you know, if they wanted to hear from the Board of Selectmen, I said what I was yeah. going to say. But I don't think Anthony said anything either. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only t I'm only kidding, Anthony. At, at he knows point, that it won't become a public way because you haven't met statutory requirements. Even if you continue on and go through the acquisition and pay them the dollar, you've you've failed to meet statutory requirements. So it cannot be recognized as a public way. Yeah, so that's why we're gonna. Hey, the the town council, take a look. Take a look at it here. Yeah, well, let me just ask this one last question: Was town council involved in coordinating this process? No. 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 Well, then, I'd be interested to see what happens next. I will talk. You will be, <laughs> you will be duly informed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If there's nothing else, uh, is, there, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.